Mind Setters, welcome to Learn Extra Live. I'm Katleho and today we're here with Hayley. Hi, Mind Hayley Setters. Hayley will be doing grade 10 math literacy. Hey, Hayley. Absolutely. What's going to be up today? Katleho, today we're going to be doing probability. Okay. And guys, I hope that you're all ready for it because I think it should be a fun lesson. Yeah. And yeah, so... <laughs> You tell them how get to get ready hold of for us. a thrilling lesson. I know we have lots of stuff to do today and lots of exciting stuff to do today. So I'm really keen for that. You guys know how to get hold of us. Facebook.com forward slash learn extra. And our Twitter handle is at learn extra. I hope you guys are refreshed from school and have had some lunch and everything because this is going to be an awesome lesson, grade 10. Over to you, Hayley. <laughs> Thanks, Katlejo. Guys, before we start, you know what we do first thing in my lesson every week is we look at our numbers. So we're doing probability and let's go last week's numbers. And you know, it was a bit tough for me so nicely. Last week's numbers was 10702. What is today's number, Katlejo? 11 11 041 041 yay yes. we got over 11 we yeah. should have had a party we should have had a party we should <laughs> wish have. we could have a party every week <laughs> but what's the probability of that happening i don't think very mm, much okay yeah. so <laughs> okay guys let's start with probability i hope that we have some fun today and I'm going to start by giving you some theory, just a little bit about probability. Then we're going to do some questions, and in the questions, I'll kind of go through a lot more theory with you. So, first of all, what is probability? So, let's just make a couple of notes. So, probability, probability, I think I've left, left out a T, yeah. probability Okay, I can't spell, is <laughs> the probability that something occurs. So we're looking at the probability of something happening. Something happening. Eh, definitely not. Of something happening. And then we can give it, we can discuss it in three different ways. We can discuss it as a percentage, we can discuss it as a decimal number, and we can discuss it as a um, fraction. So, there are three ways. We can do it as a decimal. Yeah, I'm struggling to write today. Try that again. A decimal, a fraction, or a percentage. Right. So, those are the three ways. So, let's just briefly, I'm going to put the pen down even, discuss the probability of something occurring. So, for example, Katlejo rain. The probability that it rains today. Mm. Did we see the weather today? Did you see the weather today? I didn't, but I've seen the clouds out see, today. Seen the clouds <laughs> outside. <laughs> so let's, let, let, let's say that if we had seen the weather today, possibly the probability was, say, 30% chance that it would rain. That means that there's a 30% chance it will rain. There's also a 70% chance that it won't rain. And when we're discussing rain, what's important to note is that this is in the catchment area. So they look at a particular area, and it's basically, is it going to rain there? So sometimes they say, well, there's a 30% chance of raining in Joburg. Joburg's this huge area. The 30% is only one part. And I mean, often, I don't know about you, but I know I'm sitting at home, and mm. it's not raining by me, and yet at my mother, yeah, it's, it's raining. raining. And it may so not even be far away. And it's not, not exactly far away, 100%. But it's still, what is the chance of it happening? So I've got 30%. Um, so that's just an example of a probability, 30% chance of rain. Let's now look at the probabilities in these three categories that I was discussing. So if I look at the numbers from zero, whoa, what a funny looking zero. Zero, I'll try that again. From zero, there's my zero, to one. Hey, and I'm going to look at decimals. I'm going to start with decimals. I'm going to look at decimals in between. So the chance of something not happening is zero. So an example of that would be possibly if I had, um, um, I'm trying to think if Ty was here. The chance of Ty falling pregnant, zero. 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 <laughs> okay, so that, it's never going to happen. The chance of something definitely happening is one. So the chance that I am now teaching you probability and you are watching this program is a definite, it's happening right now, and that is one. If we look at it as percentage, the chance of Ty falling pregnant 0% and the chance of me teaching you 100%. So those are your extremes. And then we've got chances of things happening in between. So we can have a 0,5%, 0,5%, 0,5%, 0,5%, 0,5%, 0,5%, 0,5%, 0,5%, 0,5%, 0,5%, 0,5%, 0,5%, 0,5%, 0,5%, 0,5%
0,5, or we could call it 50%. So the chance of it half happening, so it's either going to happen or not, but it's like a 50-50 chance, well, that would be in between. And we've got numbers all the way to both extremes. I can write it also as a fraction. The chance of something occurring as 50% will be 1 out of 2. This would still be 0. Okay. This would still be 0. <laughs> Get my pen again. Even out of a fraction and as a percentage. As a percentage, this would be 100%. And as a fraction, we could have it, say, maybe possibly 2 out of 2. It could be 5 out of 5, but we're basically looking at a whole number of 1. So that's your fraction. Right, I hope that I've explained that well mm. enough of things happening. But let's look at how we would write things as a fraction. So I'm actually going to go to the next page. I'm going to have another blank page here. How would I write my probability? Now, I could say my probability is actually my favorable outcome. That's what I want, my favorable outcome. Favorable outcome. I think I'll explain that in a little bit more detail in a second, divided by my total outcomes. And can you see that that's going to give me a fraction? So let's do this with some examples. My probability of taking a coin and getting heads on a coin. Okay, I'm definitely having some interference with something here. <laughs> No, there's no, <laughs> it's not closing. <laughs> right, <laughs> let's take a coin. Right, I have a 50 cent piece here. I don't know how well you can see this. I'm actually going to give it to Katlejo. And we're going to see what the probabilities, I'm going to pass yeah. it to you. Right, what are the probabilities of me dicing a head? Okay, or uh, dicing, of me throwing a head. Now, what is my favorable outcome? That is the coin landing with heads showing. So that would be my favorable. How many possible outcomes have I got? I've got heads or tails. So I have two possible outcomes. So let's see what Katejo gets. Must I just flip it? Just flip the coin. Right. What does it land on? Heads. It landed on heads. Well, that's great. But what was the probability was in actual fact one, because heads, there was one heads out of a possible two. So that is my probability. Now, if I had to ask Katlejo to flip this again and again and again, well, she's going to probably be cross with me after a while. <laughs> um, but the reality is, is that the first time she got heads, which was kind of like maybe a fluke, um, but we will end up with like a 50-50 ratio. The more times we flip, she'll end up with so many heads and so many tails. And the longer we do this, the closer we will get to our half. Okay, let's look at a dice. Right, if I've got a dice, dice has got six sides. So my possible outcomes on a dice <laughs> is total possible outcomes is six. Now, what is the probability of me landing on a one on a dice? Well, how many ones have I got on the dice? I've only got one, so my possibility is one out of six. And again, if I had to hand this to Katlejo and she had to throw the dice, well, let's, let's, let's see that. Let's, let's, let's hand that over. Okay, okay um, let's see what she gets. Okay. Five. Five. Okay, well, we have to do this over and over again. Eventually, we're going to get one-sixth one. of the throws that she makes will be a one. So that's how we deal with probability. It is our favorable outcome, what do we want, out of our total possible outcomes. So before we move on, I'll tell you what, let's look at some cards. But before we go to cards, I think we need to just discuss cards. So let's find some space here. So let's look at playing cards. And I'm going to show you the playing cards in a second. Right, what are our playing cards made up of? Our playing cards, we've got four suits. And I'm not going to be very good at drawing them. I've got hearts. I've got diamonds. I've got spades. And I've got clubs. So I've just dropped a card. So I've got hearts, diamonds, 
spades and clubs. There are four of each card. Then I have 13 cards in each suit. I've got the ace, ace, which is also a one, oh, let's make it a one, to 10, as in number cards, with the numbers one to 10. And I also have a jack, a queen, and a king. So let me try to show you those to you. I've got a jack, a queen, and a king. Where's my king? And a king. So I hope that you can see those. So what have we got? We've got 13 of each, which basically gives me Let's look at the kings for a moment. I've got four different kings because I've got the king of hearts, the king of diamonds, the king of spades, and the king of clubs. And in each card, I have four of each. So four different suits and 13 different cards. In total, I have 52 cards. Now, don't want you to panic that you don't know anything about cards because what would happen in an exam or in an exercise, if you were given a kind of exercise and asked for probability dealing with cards, they would actually explain the breakdown of the cards. Let's now look at our probability of getting the king of hearts. Oh, not too bad a heart. Probability of me choosing the king of hearts. Well, first thing I have to do is get my favorable outcome. So my favorable outcome is how many kings of hearts do I have in a pack? Well, I only have one. And how many cards do I have? 52. So that's the probability of me choosing the king of hearts. If I had to do, what's the probability of me getting a king? Let's look at that probability. Now, in each one of these instances, I've actually put the cards back. So I've still got 52 cards. How many kings are there? Question is, there are four kings. Remember the four different suits? So we've got four kings out of a total possible 52 cards. And I can simplify that. I can leave it like this. And this is one thing with probability. You can leave your fraction the way it is. You can simplify it if you like, but be careful if they ask you for the percentage or if they ask you to give the answer in a decimal form. So we can take our calculator and we can actually just type that into our calculator, 4 divided by 52, and we get 1 out of 13. And if they ask you for a decimal, well, it's 0, 0,07. If they ask you for percentage, remember when we did percentage, we multiply everything by 100. So go back to my notes here. And I can simplify that as 1 over 13. Hey, and I can carry on doing this one. Let's do one more. What is my probability of getting a heart? Well, my question is, how many hearts do I have? What's my favorable outcome? Well, I told you that there were 13 of each suit. So there are 13 hearts and I'm dividing by my total possible outcome. That's how many cards do we have? So I've got 52 cards. <laughs> I have a really wonderful time with the board today. And I can simplify that is one out of four. Okay, you can do that on your calculator. So that's working with probability. The hardest part of working with probability is actually working with finding the total possible outcomes. So that's really where the trick comes in to the question and I will show you later on in the show how you can do one of those, how, how we can calculate the total possible outcomes. One more thing I'm going to show before I actually go on to the questions is I'm going to tell you, um, well I'm going to tell you two things. First thing is we need to note that if we are putting the card back or not. So let's deal with our cards. If I had to take out the probability of getting a king of hearts, let's go back to my king of hearts, was still one out of 52. And now if I want to take out another card, a second card, and I want the probability of, the say, the queen of hearts, I now have how many queens of hearts have I got? I've got one. But how many cards have I got? I've only got 51 cards left. So 51 cards is what's left. So my probability actually increases because I've got less of my outcomes, less of my total possible outcomes. 
And we need to look out for the words and. So if I want to know, and I'm not going to do the calculation because we'll see it in our work. If I want and, so if I want the probability of the king of hearts and the probability of a queen of hearts, then what I need to do is take my fraction of the king, my fraction of the queen, and in this case, when we have and, we multiply the two. But if I wanted either or, then I would add. So if I went to have, well, I wanted the probability of only choosing one card, and I wanted the probability of king of hearts, or the probability of it being the queen of hearts, in this case, my probability is still 1 out of 52. But remember, I'm only choosing one card. So my probability of the queen is still 1 out of 52 as well. And or we add. So it's slightly different to what you do. What kind of makes sense. I don't know how to put this, Katleko, but I know that normally when we think of and we add. In probability, and we multiply. Mm -hmm. So it's different to what we used to. Or we add. So it's just the words that you need to look out for, those kind of words. Or you add, and, and we multiply. So that's just something to look out for when you're doing the questions. But the best way to actually conquer this is to actually do some examples. So I think maybe we should go on to question yeah. one. Okay, yeah. so let's do our first question. We'll find our question. Right, we have a question. A bag has five apples, three pears, and four oranges. Find the following and express your answers as a fraction. So that's an important part we need to express as a fraction. So what are they looking at? We want to know the probability of an apple is chosen. So what is how many apples? My favorable outcome is choosing an apple. So my question to you is how many apples did we have? So let's go back and read. We had five apples. So my probability of choosing an apple is five. Out of my total possible outcomes, that is my total possible fruit that I have in this bag. So how many fruit have I got? I'm going to do that separately and I'll change the colors for a second. I've got five apples plus three pears plus four oranges. So add that up, I've got a total of 12. So let's go back to my pink, because I like my pink. So my total possible outcome is 12 pieces of fruit. And they said, leave our answer as a fraction. So we can leave our answer exactly like that. We don't even have to try and simplify. What is the probability that a pair is chosen? So how many pairs have we got? We've got three pairs, and I still have 12 fruit in the bag. So my probability is just 3 out of 12. If you'd like to simplify it, we can. So that is a quarter. But it, the instruction doesn't say simplify. And you won't lose marks if you don't simplify. So have a look out for that. What's the probability of an apple or pear is chosen? So I've got my apple was 5 out of 12. My pear was 3 out of 12. And I've got the word or, which means I need to add these. Now, remember when adding fractions, if your denominator is the same, you can just add the numerators. So we've got 5 plus 3 is 8 out of 12. And we can simplify that if you like. We can leave it as is. Let's do the last one. And then I think we need to take a little bit of a break. What do you say, Katlejo? Yes, let's do that. Well, let's do the last let's question. Do the last one, yeah. So the probability that no pair is chosen. Well, I can do this in two ways. I can say, what's the probability of me choosing a pair and then minus that from one? Or I can work out the probability of apples and, what was our other fruit? Apple and oranges. So let's work out the probability of a pair because we've worked that out already. Our probability that a pair was one out of four. So probability that it's not a pair is we take our one and we minus our quarter and we end up with three quarters. We should actually end up with the same answer no matter which way we do it. But we ended up with three quarters probability of not choosing a pair. So it's important to just read carefully. But I think let's take a little bit of a break. Okay, let's do that. So guys, you know, you know the drill. 
keep sending us all your questions and all your queries on what we have done and we'll see you after the break. Welcome back guys. I'm glad to see all your comments. Remember that you can still send questions and Hayley will go through them in the last 15 minutes of the show. Remember to send questions only, only about the probability that we've been doing and we'll be sure to answer them for you. Go ahead, hey. <laughs> Thanks, Katleka. <laughs> okay, let's move on to question two. I hope that this is all making sense and I'm hoping that you can conquer probability. Well, What's the probability of you answering the questions correctly? Well, hopefully with us, and if you tune in every week, it yeah. will increase. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so question two, we're looking at two bags. Each contains three items. So let's mark what these bags contain. They, one has three marbles, and the other has three cubes. In each bag, the colors are green, red, and blue. Two items are drawn at the same time, one from each bag. That's important, so we're taking out one marble and one cube. So, first question says, draw a tree diagram to show all the possible outcomes when the items are drawn. Now, I'm going to take a step back because I haven't actually shown you how to do a tree diagram, so this is when I'm going to do it now. A tree diagram is one way of determining all the possible outcomes. So, and it is one of the easiest ways to actually show that uh, all the possible outcomes. So, let's start. What we do is for each event, we create a tree. And what we mean by tree is that we are looking at our first event. Okay, so let's do this together. Our first event is choosing a marble out of the one bag. So, in the bag, I had three different marbles. So this is why it's called a tree, because each one of these I'm going to refer to as branches. So I start off in the center of the page, and I create three branches because I've got three events. And each of these is a marble, and I had three different colors. So let's write the colors in. I had green, red, and blue. So I'm going to write it as a G, R, and B. Uh, green, red, and blue, and I know that that's my marble. Now, this is the most crucial part of the tree diagram. For the second event and the third event and thereafter, we are going to create a tree or, and with branches for each one of our branches. So my second event should look very similar because I have three events, I've got three outcomes, and I've got three different colors. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it onto each one of the branches. So if I choose a green marble, I can still choose, maybe I should do this in a different color. Let's change color here. Okay, so if I have a green marble, I can still choose a green cube, a red cube, or a blue cube. But if I choose a red marble, I can have all three events occurring. I'll have a green, a red, and a blue. And finally, if I get a blue one, I can still have a green, a red, and a blue. So what's really important is for each branch of the tree, you need to allocate all the different outcomes. And if I had to now go again, maybe there was another bag, each one of these branches, I would draw the outcomes again. So how many outcomes have I got? Well, it's how many branches did I end up with? And if I count them, I'll see that there were nine branches in total. But I just want to show you how to read the outcomes. What we do is, I'm going to try to do this with a highlighter. Let's see if this is going to work. Don't have an, okay, no, we'll try with a different color. So I start at the center and I draw a line going to green. So I've got a green marble and then I go down one of these branches and a green. So I've got a green marble and a green cube. So remember my first one was marbles and my second one was cubes. Then I go back to the beginning. And I go green because I want to color in every single line. So I go green and then I've got red. So that's green and red. Back to the beginning, green and blue. So that's green and blue. 
and I carry on doing this until every single one of my lines has been colored in or highlighted. Use colors, it makes it interesting. Okay, so I'm going to go red, draw a line across, and green. So we've got red and green, red and red, and then red and blue. Finally, I've got blue and green. I've got blue and red. And lastly, blue. Oops, we moved up blue. And blue. And those are now all my possible outcomes. So let me see if I've answered the question correctly. It said, draw a tree, tree, down to show, tree diagram to show all the possible outcomes when the items are drawn. And I've done that. I've got all my possible outcomes. There are nine of them. And I've got every single combination that's possible. So let's move on to the next part of the question and see what it says. What is the probability of drawing a green cube and a red marble? Well, now I've already done all my probabilities. Let's go to the page before. I want a, no, let me go back. What did I want? I wanted a green cube and red marble. So I'm going to go down here and see, I want a green cube and a red marble. So there's my red marble. But let's get a different color. Let's try orange now. I'm going to look for my favorable outcome. I'm looking for a red marble and a green cube. So there's the only one. And I can mark it. And I can go through all my outcomes and see how many I've got. Well, in this case, I can see there's only one. So what's the probability of that occurring? It is one out of nine. Now, from a tree diagram, it's really easy for me to actually calculate this. It's my favorable outcome. There was only one. Out of my total possible outcomes, there was nine. Let me quickly show you how we would do this if we had to look at it mathematically, kind of with the either or one that I showed you earlier. What's my probability of getting a green cube? Well, my green cube was, in actual fact, there were three different colors. So green was one out of three. And I'm going to multiply my probability of a red marble. There was also one out of three. And you see, even if you need to do this on your calculator, although I don't know if you do, we multiply the top, one times one is one, and we multiply the bottom is nine, and it's the same answer. Easier to do it from a tree diagram? Certainly. But can you do it mathematically? You can. And remember, that's that there's always more than one way of doing something. So we've got our answer. What's the probability of now getting two blue items? Well, we can go back to our diagram, our tree diagram, and see, well, blue diagrams, the blue, there was only this one. So again, one out of nine. So let's put our answer in to our question two blue items was also one out of nine. And again, we could have done it mathematically. Hey, I hope now that you can draw a tree diagram. Most important thing is just to practice. I always give my kids, I always give my kids when I teach them this, I say to them, well, what's the probability of playing a soccer match? Because I think they can all relate to soccer. <laughs> and what's the probability of the outcome of a soccer match. Well, you can win, you can lose, or you can draw. draw yeah. So you've got three outcomes. Then I say, well, okay, if you play two games, mm -hmm. then what do we do? And if you play three games, and it starts getting yeah. very, very much bigger, and our tree diagram kind of expands and grows, but it's really a nice exercise, yeah, and is. I enjoy doing it with soccer. Yeah. So maybe you can practice that and see what happens with three games. How many? Maybe we should put that as a challenge. Maybe we should. Maybe How many outcomes would there be if you three yeah. soccer games? Yeah. Let's post that as a challenge. Okay, so let's move on to our next question there while we're doing that. Okay, question three says Samantha works as a call center in Greytown in KwaZulu Natal. She would like to relocate to Johannesburg in Gauteng. The table below shows the number of people that relocated, that means moved between five provinces in South Africa between January 2006 and December 2009. Now you might say to yourself, I'm giving you this table, and you might say to yourself, well, 
really, what does this have to do with probability? And every now and again, we give you probability that doesn't seem like it is probability, but you'll see from the questions that it is. But what is my motto? Whenever we get a table, we need to understand the table. So before we carry on with our questions, I want to go through the table. We're looking at the number of people that relocated between the five provinces. Which five provinces? We've got Eastern Cape, Free State, Gauteng, KwaZulu-Natal, and Limpopo. So, these are the provinces people lived in in 2006, and these are the provinces they now stay in. So, if I had to example look at Eastern Cape, in 2006 these people lived in the Eastern Cape, but now these 14,700 people live in the Free State. And these people live in Gauteng, and those live in KwaZulu-Natal, and those live in Limpopo. And for each of the provinces, we've got where they relocated to and how many. So I hope you understand that table. Let's see what the questions are. How many people relocated from Limpopo to Gauteng? Well, we need to find from Limpopo, and we're going to look for Gauteng, and we're going to find it over there. So it was 2, 000, uh, 21,000 people. 21,000 people relocated from Limpopo to Gauteng. Let's read the next part of the question. Okay. Calculate the total number of people who relocated to Gauteng from the other four provinces. So we need to calculate the total number that relocated to Gauteng. So We've got two ways of looking at Gauteng. Are we going to be looking at that one? No, those are the people that were in Gauteng and relocated out. We are actually going to be looking at those numbers. So we need to add up those numbers. And now my calculation needs to come, my calculator needs to come out because I can't add such big numbers by head. So 9, uh, 93,400 plus, we've got 57,500 plus, 117100. And remember to check that you've actually entered the correct numbers, especially with big numbers. Make sure that what you're entering on your calculator and what actually says in your paper are the same thing. And we get an answer of 289,000 people. I wonder why they're relocating to Gauteng. Could you Could think of a reason? Yes, problems. <laughs> 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 289,000 people. <laughs> Well, there you go. According to Katlejo, it's the best the province, best. and that's mm -hmm. why we relocated. <laughs> so okay, let's move to our next part of our question. So far, kind of no probability, but I think we're building up to it. And now it says, calculate the difference between the number of people who relocated from KwaZulu-Natal to Gauteng and the number of people who relocated from Gauteng to KwaZulu-Natal. So we need to do two things. We need to find the numbers, and then we need to find the difference. So first we're going to look at the numbers. So we're going to say Gauteng to KwaZulu-Natal, and we're going to say KwaZulu-Natal to Gauteng. So let's find Gauteng to KwaZulu-Natal. There's Gauteng to KwaZulu-Natal was 56,400. And KwaZulu-Natal to Gauteng was this bigger number, 117,100. And now we just need to find the difference between the two. So we're going to use our calculator again. We've got 117,100 minus 56,400, and we get 60,700. So it was 60,700. What's really important in a calculation like this is not to just give us an answer, actually show all your steps of the calculation, because remember you get method marks for things that you've done, and to also explain to the examiner that you know what you're doing. So in actual fact, what I've left out of this calculation is I should have said, well, I needed to take these two, these two and minus them. So I need to actually see that in your calculations, that we're actually minusing the two, and that that's how we got our answer. So let's see now, I think we go on to our probability questions. What is the probability that a person chosen at random has relocated from the free state 
to Gauteng, from the Free State to Gauteng. Well, what we need to do in this case is we need to actually find the person that is relocated from Free State to Gauteng is that number. And if you can see that clearly, let's do it in a different color. Okay, so I've got 57,500 people have relocated from the free set. So that's my favorable outcome. So my answer, and now I've got the wrong color, my answer is 57,500. And I'm going to divide it by my favorable outcome. And that is my total number of people that have relocated the entire lot of people. And I'm going to write it in as my total number. Total number. Because I think that we don't need to sit and calculate them all. And I don't know what I did with my answers. So we're looking at the total number of add everything up. So we add all up. That should, that should be all right to explain. <laughs> and my favorable outcome was the person has moved to the free state and it's out of the total possible. Next part of our question is, what is the probability that a person chosen at random has relocated from Gauteng? Well, again, we would now add up everybody that's relocated from Gauteng. So that lot of numbers divided by my total. So we can add those up quickly. It won't take us too long. 31,500 plus 31,000. Okay. Plus, and I've lost the numbers, 56,400. I think I might remember them. 56,400 plus, and I think it was lots of threes. Triple three, double zero. No, need a calculator. <laughs> three, 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 zero, zero. Okay, so our total is 152,200. That's my favorable outcome. And then we're going to do it again divided by my total. So in this case, we had. 152,200. Was that the number I had on the calculator? I think. I know. 150. 152,200. Paying attention. <laughs> and we're going to be dividing that by our total. And again, I'm going to tell you what that total is. Just by the total. So that's our favorable outcome. I think at this point, maybe we should have a little bit of a break. Maybe. I think maybe. we've done a bit much. Yeah, we have. <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys' minds are probably getting bogged up by the numbers. Mm -hmm. So take a little bit of a breather and we'll see you after the break. Welcome back, Mindsetters, to the last part of the show. Remember that this is the time that you guys can send in all your questions. And I know that you grade 10s are also writing exams now. And I know that probability will be in your exams. So maybe you want to clear up all the questions that you have on it. So when you get in there, you know that this is the section that you'll get 100% for. So I'm looking forward to seeing your questions. <laughs> Over to you, Haley. Absolutely. Thanks, Katla. It would be nice to hear your questions. But in the meantime, let's carry on with one of my questions. So, a study was done about the airing of a particular television program. Men and women took part in the survey. So, what we have here is we have the table below shows the results of the survey. So, we're looking at enjoyed the program, and we've got men, women, and our total. Did not enjoy the program, we've got men, women, and total. And we've got our totals. So, we've got total men, there were 150 men, there were 100 women, and we have some blank spaces. So guess what the first question is? Complete the table by calculating the missing values. Now this is quite an important and easy part of probability. It is probability, but it is very simple. So let's get my purple, because I like my purple color. And let's complete the table. First of all, if we look at the people that enjoyed the program, I've got a total of 138 people that enjoyed, and I've got 63 men. So clearly, the difference between the two is the woman. So 138, and let's get our calculator out, 138 minus 63 will give me the woman. So there were 75 women that enjoyed this program. So we fill in our number of 75. Who did not enjoy the program? Well, I can look at my men. If I had 150 men in total and 63 enjoyed, then how many didn't? And the difference between those two? 150 minus 63 and I get 87. 87 men did not enjoy the program. 
and then I can add these up to get my total of the men that were interviewed. I can add those two numbers up, or I can add them up and minus. So I can do it either way. So let's add this 87 and 37. So see how many men were interviewed. 87 plus 37. And our total of men is 124. So write that into my table, 124. And total number of people was 250. Now somewhere those should add up. Somewhere there's a mistake. Can't work out where the mistake is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there's a little mistake somewhere in our calculations. So we've got 150. I think there. Aha. There's a mistake in the calculation, so let's just ignore the calculations. Let's not let's put in the total. Own. Let's <laughs> pretend. Okay, so there is a slight calculation because if I add them up going down, they should add up to the same amount. And clearly 75 and 37 is not 100. So I'm guessing that this number is wrong. So let's pretend we didn't see it. But guys, this is an important fact. If it does happen to you and you get something that appears to be incorrect, then just like, kind of hold on to it. And you can even make a note to the examiner because it's possible. We tend to make mistakes and we probably just mistakenly quoted that. Let's go to the next part of our question. It says, how many people were surveyed by the company? Well, in this case, we could do two different things, but let's add them up and we've got our answer of 250. So it would be our number that we had calculated. Can't do that in yellow. There would be our number that we calculated here. So let's say it's 250. Okay, we're going to use that number in our calculations. And the next part of the question says, why do you think the company separated the answers from the males and the females? I love this kind of question. Why do you think? Why do you think they separated the males and the females? Because they tend to watch different programs. They tend to watch different <laughs> programs, absolutely. But you know what's so wonderful is this type of question, is that your opinion can't be wrong. That's what I love about these questions. So you are guaranteed marks. Because I can't say that what you've said is correct or incorrect. In fact, in my memo, when I give uh, these kind of questions, I go, any valid answer. Yeah. And a tick. <laughs> but great. But normally what? Men and women do watch different programs. And in fact, we can see from our results what kind of survey we had that lots more men did not enjoy the program than women. Is the next part of our question. What percentage of people surveyed enjoyed the program? Well, I'm going to say enjoyed the program. We're going to look at that total. So this is, again, like a probability. It is people that enjoyed the program out of the total possible people that were surveyed. And we're going to times that by 100. So on our calculator, we can do that. So 138 people enjoyed the program, and we're going to divide that by 250 and get an answer times by 100, get an answer to that, and we see that it was 55.2%. 55.2% enjoyed the program. Let's move on to the next part of the question. Okay, next part of our question was what percentage of males did not enjoy the program? So we're going to find our males who did not enjoy the program. There was, how many males did not enjoy the program? I can't remember what that number was. It was 87. Do you remember it now? So there was 87 males who did not enjoy the program out of the total possible. Now, we're looking at the percentage of males did not enjoy the program. So we're looking at the total of males. So we're going to be looking at our total of males, and that's 150. So remember when you're reading the words percentage, we need to look of, of what are we looking at? Because they didn't ask us of the total people surveyed. They said the probability or the, the percentage of males. So we're going to say 87 out of 150, and let's do that as a fraction. 87 divided by 150, and we're going to times by 100. 58% of males did not enjoy the program. And then I think our last part of this question is, is a person's preference for the program dependent on gender? Use relevant calculations to support your answer. 
Now, this is really important. When they ask you to compare like genders, like male and female, or compare something that's in a table, I want you to compare the same things. Now, we're dealing with different number of females and a different number of males. So we're going to take it both down to percentage. So calculate the percentage of females that enjoyed the program, the percentage of males that enjoyed the program, and then compare those two values. I'm not going to do the calculations for you um, because I think that we're running out of time, but I'm telling you that that's what you can do. So I actually think rather than doing this, I'm going to move on to the next question. Okay. So, oops. Okay, move back to the next question. Okay, question five. So, sure we got time to do this last question. A couple are planning to have three children. It is equally likely that each child is a boy or a girl. So what have we got? One favorable outcome, if we're looking at boys, favorable outcome is one, because we can only have one boy at a time. And the possibilities are a boy and a girl, so it's one out of two. So basically a 50% chance of either occurring. Complete a tree diagram showing the possible outcomes. So let's quickly do this tree diagram. So we start off with our first pregnancy, and we can have a boy or a girl. Second pregnancy, let's change our color. Second pregnancy, a boy or a girl. And remember, for each branch, you need to complete the tree. So a boy or a girl. And then our last pregnancy, we can have a boy or a girl. And we do that for each of our branches. And then we see that in total we have eight possible outcomes or eight possible combinations of children. So let's quickly see if we've got time to answer our questions. Yeah, sure you do. So use the tree diagram to write down all the possible outcomes for their children. So let's go back to our tree diagram and quickly start writing this. Now remember I said colored pens, highlighters? Well, we've got boy, boy, boy. I'm not going to do them along. I'm going to just, uh, what color haven't I used here? We'll have to use green again. So I've got possibility of boy, boy, boy. Go back to the beginning. I've got boy, boy, and girl. And then boy, girl. I'm going to just do a few. Boy, girl, and boy. A boy, girl, and girl. Well, there's not that many of them. Now we've got girl, boy, boy, girl, boy, girl, and lastly, girl, girl, boy, and finally, three girls. So there's all our outcomes. So we've done that part of the question. Now let's read the next part of the question. So we've done the tree down, we've drawn our possible. What is the probability that the couple will have three boys? Well, if you remember correctly, there was only one possibility of having three boys. That was the first one that we drew. And there were a total of eight outcomes. Favorable outcomes was eight. So it became one out of eight. And the next question says, what is the probability that the, that the couple will have one daughter? So one daughter, let's go back to our calculations and see the one daughter. Right. And I'm going to take a cut in different color, and I'm going to highlight the ones that have got a daughter. So we've got a girl there, girl there, girl there. In fact, we've got a girl in all our combinations, except and probably having one daughter. Sorry, we're going to delete that one. Okay, We're looking for the ones where there's only one daughter, one girl. So we can count them. We've got one, and two. The second last one. Three that we can delete. Yeah, that, that we can delete, that we can go back and delete, and we've lost it now. Oopsie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we had three out of eight. You'll have to believe me, there was three out of eight. And then the next question I think asks for at least. But guys, I'm going to leave you now. I just want you to do a quick recap, and then I'm going to hand you over to Katleko. I'm running out of time, so guys, practice probability. is all I can say. It's your favorable outcome out of your total possible outcomes. And now I'm going to say goodbye, everyone, and I'm going to hand you to Katlejo. Thank you very much, Hayley. Thank you, Great Tens, for an awesome lesson. I know that you guys enjoyed all the little gadgets that we had today, which is very nice. Remember that you can still send in your questions because I know that you guys are writing exams and so that you can practice, practice, practice. Remember to learn more, learn extra. Enjoy your evening. Goodbye, guys. <laughs>